And there's new information tonight about what the Navy SEALs seized from bin Laden's compound. And of course, we're looking live right now near bin Laden's compound in Ababadabad. Inside the compound, items recovered could hold big clues. As you know, we all first heard about the bin Laden compound late Sunday night. But Congressman Mike Rogers learned of the lavish compound back in January when he took over as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman Rogers joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thanks so, for having me. So you learned about this in January? Yes. Um, in what context? I mean, part of that, you know, that this was a potential uh, safe house for bin Laden? Well, they, uh, it was briefed to the, it's called the Big Eight, the, the chairman and ranking member of both the House Intelligence and the, and the Senate side and leadership. Uh, and what it was, it was an outline of here's something we think uh, could be big. Uh, we weren't exactly sure. They had, at least at that time, thought it could be bin Laden. Didn't have enough information to say uh, clearly it was, uh, but believed strongly that this had real possibility. So from January, the briefing, looking at the compound, looking at what they had, and then exploring all the options through the, uh, through the engagement this uh, last Sunday. At what point did you think uh, that it was bin Laden? Was it at the point when you actually we got the information or was it an earlier point? It, it was sure, you could tell the analysts who were briefing it clearly believed uh, that bin Laden was there. We knew it was someone important. They believed it was someone important. Never spotted though. No. Never spotted. Never spotted directly. Anyway, let me let me put it that way. But over the course of time, more information was gathered, uh, and it built a very strong. It was a circumstantial case. So at the end of the day, if you had all of these independent analysts, uh, operators. People like uh, members of Congress, chairman and ranking members of the committee looking over their shoulders saying, yeah, I, we all believe that Osama bin Laden is there, but wasn't 100 percent sure uh, that he was there. So it did, you know, like, good, good on the president for, for for letting the operation move forward. But it seems that they had, they had this lead from the courier where it started at the beginning, but they had to get the corroboration sometime, and so there had to be something more. Um, he was in a dead zone. He wasn't using his cell phone. He wasn't using the Internet. Um, he wasn't coming outside. I mean, so, you know, what would you know what would lead us to believe that he was inside well, they had uh, source information uh, about his kinds of living conditions that uh, that were third party uh, confirmed. Other you, people talking? Uh, other people talking. You know, this, this, this was a, a, a complicated case to put together. And we have to remember, it started with that little piece of information about a courier. I mean, it was a nickname of, of an, uh, on an Arabic name of somebody that they believed at that time five years ago was a courier from Bin Laden. That's how it started. Now imagine trying to find that in the Middle East. Pretty difficult task. So they kept putting it together. They kept getting closer. Uh, at one point, surveillance of one of the couriers that was known later in the, in the investigation to be identified to be close to bin Laden went to the compound. That's how they found it originally. And then over time, for watching it and surveilling it and doing other things, they were able to put together a very strong case where I think most rational people would read what they had available and say, I believe Osama bin Laden is in there. But, uh, but I'm thinking to myself is that if they follow the courier essentially to the compound and they see him going in, that doesn't mean that bin Laden's inside. Or, you know, I mean, there's got to be something that gives them a little bit more information in the mere fact. I mean, maybe that was enough. I mean, obviously, it turned well, out to it be was, right. You can, we can't tell you everything they have. So there but, was more you can't tell me. Is that, well, yeah. is that yeah, fair? Yeah, okay. Let me tell you, actually, they did a pattern of life, which they would do on anything of this magnitude for a long period of time. And after all of the things concluded in that pattern of life, uh, you know, human intelligence, signals intelligence, uh, satellite intelligence, all of those things came together to say, uh, you know, with other pieces of information, yes, I think that, I think it's Osama bin Laden. And again, I, I think an average person walking in, being briefed on to that detail, would come to the same conclusion. And obviously the president did as well. So how did you find out, yes, bingo, we got him? Uh, well, we were briefed that the operation was about to, to take place. Uh, I got a call from uh, Leon Panetta, the director of the CIA, who did a fantastic job in this, by the way, uh, on Sunday, uh, saying it's done and we have them. Uh, I asked, I asked if we had the body. <laughs> well, we knew it was going to go on. I mean, yeah. we were on pins and needles knowing the operation was going to go because some of these can be dry holes. There was, if this was not 100% uh, a done deal. Had you gone through this before on some other operation? There have been other operations uh, for different levels of high value targets. Get there, nothing there, get there, wrong people. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit risky to, to take this call. However, I think that the volume of evidence justified the decision 
and of course there's nothing like success uh, that says it was the right thing to do. And indeed we did have success, so that's great. Yeah. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks hey, for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me.